Do you have PCOS? 20% of women of childbearing age have it. I would estimate that's who's diagnosed. I would say there's probably a subclinical population that's quite a bit higher than that. Uh, it's associated with having cysts on your ovaries, also um, having trouble with infertility because you're not ovulating, you're losing your hair, you develop male patterned baldness. Uh, there's interestingly, we'll get to that, the root cause of this problem also affects men and the fact that they're sort of turning into women, if you will, having too much estrogen while the female PCOS uh, is associated with too many androgens, uh, testosterone in the case of women. So uh, we understand the symptoms. I wanted to talk to you today about a paper. I'm gonna read the name of it. It was out of Biomedicine and it's called Metabolic and Molecular Mechanisms of Diet and Physical Exercise in the Management of PCOS. And so what's exciting about this is it's really getting to the true underlying root cause of PCOS rather than just managing the fact that a woman has these higher levels of hormones that are causing the infertility, non-ovulation, male pattern baldness, uh, cysts on the ovaries with putting them on birth control, putting them on a drug called spironolactone, sometimes putting them on metformin. So all these medications with all their attendant side effects and then a woman having to spend $30,000, $40,000 to um, deal with their infertility instead of standing back and saying, what is the underlying root cause of this condition? And that's what I wanna talk about today. And it's actually very exciting. So. Um, Basically, the underlying root cause is poor metabolic health and insulin resistance. So insulin resistance comes about because, unfortunately, here in the United States and, and several other industrialized nations, uh, we have a terrible diet. So there's highly processed foods, high sugar, the fast food. This type of diet is leading to insulin resistance. So is lack of exercise, poor sleep, a lot of stress. So if, you, if you're nodding going, yeah, that's me, I don't sleep well, I'm under a lot of stress, my diet's not great, I don't get enough exercise. Yes, you're in very good company, but it's not healthy company. And so specifically, we're talking about PCOS in our young women of childbearing age, and this is a formula for disaster because the things I just mentioned elevate your glucose, which elevates your insulin, and what does that lead to? It leads to a lot of different problems and we could be talking about heart disease and diabetes and um, cognitive decline later in life like Alzheimer's. We could talk about cancer. It is so interesting that the root cause of so many of the degenerative diseases we do not want to get, it's the same. The solution is not that hard because they have the same underlying root cause. But we're talking about PCOS. So what happens when you have that elevated insulin? Very specifically, and what this paper went over, is it elevates an enzyme that just drives the manufacturing of what's called androgens, excess androgens in women, DHEA and testosterone. Now, we're supposed to have DHEA, we're supposed to have some testosterone, but not to such an excessive extent that our ovaries are no longer ovulating and you know uh, producing an egg every month and we have so much testosterone we're getting male pattern baldness and, and all the things that we just discussed so it's women turning into men what's fascinating about this is the same cascade if you will of poor diet not enough sleep stress elevates the exact same enzyme in men, but in men, it causes an increase of estrogen. So you are penalized, whether you're a male or a female, for this poor lifestyle and diet. You are absolutely penalized in what your hormones are doing and then what that leads to. So men get the big, bill, uh, big, <laughs> big bellies, um, they, they can develop breast, tissue, uh, they have erectile dysfunction, they're infertile. I mean, you know, ladies, it takes two. So, um, well, the natural way, it takes two. And so we 
We want our men to be fertile. We want to be fertile if that's what we're interested in. But remember, it's not just about making babies. Having balanced hormones gives one a feeling of well-being and cognitive balance, um, good energy, you're building muscle, not fat. So there's a whole lot of reasons to have balanced hormones. Okay, so we have the high insulin increasing this particular enzyme that then is offsetting the hormones of women and men alike. The other interesting thing is that associated with insulin resistance or lack of insulin sensitivity is obesity. And it turned out that 97% of women who are obese uh, uh, have the PCOS. So you see this combination of PCOS and obesity in 97% of the women suffering. So this, this is a formula that is very common. Now, what happens with this obesity? We have increased fat cells. Now, fat cells are not just lying there innocently going, here I am. They do a lot of negative things. One is they produce hormones, and, uh, but bad hormones. So one hormone is called leptin. Now, leptin is really obnoxious because it makes you feel hungry all the time, even though you have weight to lose. Very unfair, very frustrating. Talk to a lot of my patients and they have weight to lose. And they're like, I'm never satisfied, I'm always hungry. And that's this really evil hormone, leptin, which we can get under control, so don't worry about that. But it still is very, very frustrating to just eat, know you've eaten enough, but you're not satisfied and you need more. But leptin does something else, and that is that it decreases a very important immune cell, and this is called your T regulatory cell. Now, regulate, right? So think about it that way to remember it. So what these cells do is they make sure your immune system understands friend from foe. Because what is your immune system supposed to do? It's supposed to kill the bad guys, right? There is a bacteria, there is a virus, there is a cancer cell. Attack, 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 go get the bad guy. But with autoimmune disease, which I mentioned earlier, or if I didn't, I meant, I meant to, is autoimmune disease and PCS are connected. And what is autoimmune disease? Your immune system is attacking self. So it's very common to have um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, so that's the autoimmune thyroid disease associated with PCOS. And so here's the connection. Now Hashimoto's happens to be the most common autoimmune disease, but there can be others, but that one is extremely common. Uh, associated with PCOS, and now we're seeing why. So you have these T regulatory cells that are decreased because of the excess fat cells. Leptin decreases their production, and you need these T regulatory cells to say, oh, no, 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 don't attack the thyroid, that's us. <laughs> that's not them, that's us. And, but they're de it's decreased because of the leptin, because of the excess weight, because of the excess fat cells. And then there's nothing to suppress that um, attacking self, and so what happens? An autoimmune disease develops. I'm gonna look at my notes, see what else I've, um, anything I've forgotten. So now, treatment. Let's get to the good part. Um, diet is incredibly important. In other words, your lifestyle choices. Real food, not sugar, not processed food, not fast food, and if you're just like, oh, forget about it. It's not that hard. I gotta tell you, it's not that hard. Yes, you need some help, you need some direction. I get it, but it's so worth it. It is so, so worth it. And the body is very appreciative. We're trying to get that excess insulin down. We're trying to get the weight down that comes along with it. Not doing stupid things to lose weight doing intelligent rebalancing, and then the weight loss comes along with it. But we're lowering that insulin, we're lowering, lowering the inflammation, all these things we talked about. Now, uh, getting proper sleep, intermittent fasting. Now, talk about intermittent fasting, and <laughs> you'll hear a lot of different advice. I'm gonna give you my best advice that I understand based on research, longevity research, and that is um, 12 to 14 hour fast, not, um, yeah, so not eating for 12 to 14 hours. A lot of people go up to 20 hours of fasting. The research doesn't support that long term, okay? The long term research says 12 to 14 hours, and then beyond 14, 
you're getting into the window of affecting your gallbladder, affecting your heart. This is uh, Dr. Longo's work. So he's been looking at this for a very long time. So until that changes, I'm sticking with my 12 to 14 hour fast. What else can you do for treatment of PCOS? Exercise, get moving, find something that does that, makes you happy. Even if it doesn't make you happy at first, it will make you happy as you get used to it. Resistance training, you wanna move the body, you wanna increase circulation, that helps a tremendous amount. And honestly, it's hard to get uh, insulin resistance under control if you're completely sedentary. They just, it doesn't go along with optimal health, unfortunately. So you can start with walking. There's a lot of great videos um, that you can watch for, you know, they have great music and it just gets you going, but exercise is very key. What else do I have on here? Uh, good quality sleep. One thing to consider if you're having trouble with your sleep quality is that um, when your immune system is highly inflamed, that kind of comes out at, at rest time because that's when your immune system is most active is when you're at rest. Uh, that's when you're, the body's supposed to be sort of cleaning house with the immune cells just cleaning up everything. And so if there is a lot of imbalance, uh, that goes to gut health with maybe the poor diet that you've uh, done historically, maybe antibiotics, maybe certain medications you've been on. So it's really created an imbalance in what we call the microbiome where all the 38 trillion organisms are. And we need to rebalance that in order for you to get the good quality sleep that you want. So. I'm giving you some general things that you can do if you just go, wow, I'm just terrible getting myself to bed. I hear that all the time. It's like, well, I just get busy at night and I don't, I don't, I don't like to go to sleep. And honestly, I'm the same way. I don't like to go to sleep either. I wish I could just change out the battery pack, but we need to sleep. So um, whether it's a discipline point and you get some white noise and, and you get a sleep mask so that your room is, you know, so it's, you're in darkness, um, you're not eating two, three hours before bed. Three is ideal, um, you know, so you're not going to bed with a, a full stomach. You stop water several hours before bed so you don't have to get up to urinate at night. So if you're doing all these sort of sleep hygiene techniques and that's not enough, then reach out to us so we can help with the next step of why you're, um, there's inflammation in the gut uh, as far as your immune system is concerned. And then coming full circle, um, PCOS, our topic for today with the hormonal imbalance, hormonal imbalance can offset sleep. So you get in a little bit of a catch 22, but we can, we can fix it, it's not that hard. What else do I have? Oh, vitamin D, uh, most Americans are deficient in vitamin D. If you haven't measured yours re recently, should be part of your annual physical. We like it around 60. Um, and uh, if, if it's too low, you can definitely consider taking vitamin D at night with your evening meal because it helps with sleep, it helps with your immune system. Uh, so all of those things obviously happening at night. It's fat soluble. It would be unusual that you would eat an evening meal that didn't have some fat. Uh, so that helps with absorption and also magnesium. Magnesium helps with sleep. It also helps um, with insulin sensitivity. Uh, another good one at night, it's very relaxing. And another uh, mineral in this case, vitamin D being a vitamin, but it's actually a hormone. Um, but magnesium is very commonly deficient in Americans. So let me check my list. Oh, last one's a cold plunge. So. I'm not brave about this, I'll be perfectly honest, but um, a cold plunge, ending your shower in the morning with, with cold water, uh, whether a tub of cold water, it's actually really great for your immune system. It kind of wakes up the good fat cells versus the bad inflammatory fat cells. So these are all the things you can do, but I think this work is very, very exciting as far as what it revealed for a root cause problem because PCOS underlies so many of the issues that women are having. And remember the same root cause is causing imbalance in men as well, which I find fascinating. So if you like this, please uh, give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your response. I'd love to hear what you've been running into with PCOS and, and the treatment and how you felt. Uh, we have great success with it here at Root Cause and we'd be delighted to help you. So you can reach out for a consultation at the website, rootcausemedicalclinics.com.